We've run uh, these simulators both here and at the Cape and at the contractors that, uh, continuously ever since uh, last night. We've tried to simulate virtually everything that we've had the crew to do that, uh, that is non-normal that they've done. And uh, we've proven most everything that we've uh, been able to, uh, to run on the simulator prior to passing it up to them. There may be some details we haven't done, but at least we've checked the feasibility of everything we've done, and we'll continue to do that. They passed 137 miles from the moon. For Lovell, it was the second time that he had seen the moon so near. But there was no time for contemplation. There was another critical burn coming. Okay, look at let's, uh, let's get the cameras put away. Let's get off this burn. So, we have one chance, now. And in Houston, the newsmen poured in to tell an anxious world the story. Shortly after Apollo 13 had separated from the Saturn third stage, the stage had been sent on to a trajectory toward the moon. Its impact would be recorded by the seismometer left by Apollo 12. By the way, uh, Aquarius, we see the results now from uh, 12's seismometer. Looks like your booster just hit the moon and it's uh, rocking it a little bit, over. Well, at least something worked on this flight. I'm sure glad we didn't have a limb impact, too. Jim, you are go for the burn. Go for the burn. Roger, understand. Go for the burn. Guidance okay? We're good, flight. Control okay? We're okay, flight. Tell me. We're go, flight. Inco okay? We're good, flight. Ground confirms ignition. We're burning 40%. Boris Houston, you're looking good. Roger. Shut down. Roger, shut down. I say that was a good burn. Roger, now we want to power down as soon as possible. Understand. To conserve the electric power and cooling water, the crew shut down all but the vital life-sustaining systems of the LEM. I think the LEM spacecraft's in uh, excellent shape, and I think it's fully capable of uh, getting the crew back uh, I think, as we have found before, every time we've put the LEM spacecraft to a test, it's always done much more than it was guaranteed to do, and I think this is a good case in point. Conserve the consumables, cooling water, electric power. The LEM water gun was leaking, and uh, we shut that off. Uh, I guess it leaked about a quart of water, I would, I would estimate. But it took me about two days to get my feet dry. And of course, is, uh, I think you were all aware that the temperatures were going down in the, both vehicles. And uh, uh, it's made for very chilly feet for a couple days. astronauts will come back safe. If I may be serious for one moment and ask the entire audience for a moment of prayer for the crewmen of the Apollo 13. We'll hold silence for a moment, please. RCS A stands at 62% and B at 62%. I see we've been throwing a hell of a long time without any sleep. We're about to start thinking about getting 
to be able to sleep again because uh, I, uh, I didn't get her any sleep last night at all. Command module just slowly kept going down in temperature until I think uh, just prior to re-entry, uh, it was down to about 38 degrees. And along with that, it was a, a sort of a chilling uh, coldness. The walls were perspiring, the windows were completely wet, and it, uh, it wasn't too healthy. I recall that we went in there to get some hot dogs one day, and it was like reaching into the freezer for the, for the food. want my opinion of how they handled the situation when it happened, they handled it exactly like we'd expect them to. They, they were about as well on top of it as anybody could be who knew what we knew, knew, which isn't very much, I'll have to admit. But I think they did everything right within the knowledge that was available to us in, uh, in a timely fashion, which is what uh, all we expect of them. I think they did a beautiful job of it. We actually had a third little sleep restraint, which Fred does, then put on and buttoned up and kept a little bit warm. The astronauts faced another problem, their own exhaled breath. The lithium hydroxide chemical to take carbon dioxide out of the air was not sufficient in the lunar module. They would have to adapt the canisters from the command module to fit the hoses in the LEM. On the ground, an adapter was fashioned from materials the crew had available in the LEM. Cardboard from a checklist, plastic bags, and tape. After checkout in an environmental chamber, the directions for construction were sent up to Aquarius. At this point in time, I think the uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide was uh, reading about 15 millimeters. And we constructed two of these things and put them online, and I think within an hour, the uh, partial pressure of CO2 was down to two tenths. So you see that uh, survival uh, uh, now became one of uh of initiative and ingenuity, and, and it was one which the ground continually helped us uh, along. We had all kinds of people on the ground trying to think of ways of, of extending our lifetime. There would be still another burn, a mid-course correction to get Apollo 13 into the narrow corridor through the atmosphere for a safe return to Earth. We're at burn attitude flight. College. Ignition. Thrust looks good. Shut down. Hang in there, it won't be long. There were moments when I didn't know how much consumables we had, whether we could make it back or not, but uh, uh, in a situation like that, there's only one thing you can do. You just keep going, and uh, you just keep thinking up where you can get more consumables. And uh, so that's exactly what we did. On April 17th, they prepared for re-entry. After a small course correction burn, they jettisoned the damaged service module. Uh, uh, uh. Copy that. And there's one whole side of that big uh, business. Is that right? And the whole panel is blown out, almost from the uh, base to the uh, engine. It's really a mess. Man, that's unbelievable. Next, they got back into Odyssey to jettison Aquarius prior to entry into the atmosphere. I'm jettison. Okay, copy that. Farewell, Aquarius, and we thank you. Okay, LOS in uh, a minute or a minute and a half. Uh, an entry attitude, we'd like Omni Charlie. And welcome home. Thank you. Odyssey Houston standing by, over. Okay, go over. Odyssey Houston, we show you on the mains. It really looks great. 
Apollo 13. Apollo 13. This is recovery. Over. Air going to bypass. Ah, under Apollo 13. This is recovery, and your chutes look good. Apollo 13. This is recovery. We observed your RCS burn. Over. The recovery. Apollo 13 is descending. Apollo 13. This is recovery. Over. Call, Captain, that when I spoke to you on the phone, you said that you regretted that you were unable to complete your mission. I hereby declare that this was a successful mission. From the start, the exploration of space has been hazardous adventure. The voyage of Apollo 13 dramatized its risks. The men of Apollo 13, by their poise and skill, under the most intense kind of pressure, epitomize the character that accepts danger and surmounts it. Theirs is the spirit that built America. Your mission served your country. It served to remind us all of our proud heritage of a nation, to remind us that in this age of technicians and scientific marvels, that the individual still counts, that in a crisis, the character of a man or of men will make the difference. GNC, go, surgeon, go, procedures, go, AFD, go, network, go, computer suit, go. Raj, network, give me an amber. RTC you on AFD conference. RTC is on AFD conference. Okay, all flight controllers, let's play it cool. 